हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर महेश मोहिते पीडियाट्रिशियन पीडियाट्रिक एंड न्यूनेटल इंटेंसिविस फ्रॉम पनवेल महाराष्ट्र एंड आई हियर टू डिलीवर द नेक्स्ट टॉक ऑन स्टीयर चैनल बाय अवर बिलेवर टीचर डॉक्टर वाई के अमड़ेकर सर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस ऑन इंटरप्रिटेशन ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर अनदर वेरी इंपॉर्टंट बट मोस्ट प्रॉबेबली वेरी कॉमनली निग्लेक्टेड बाय द प्रैक्टिसिंग पीडियाट्रिशियन मोर सो बाय द ऑफिस पीडियाट्रिशियन सो ब्लड प्रेशर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाइटल पैरामीटर सरोगेटिंग द स्टेटस ऑफ कार्डियो सर्क्युलेटरी सिस्टीम ऑफ द बॉडी नॉर्मल ब्लड प्रेशर फॉर द एज डोंट रूल आउट क्रिटिकैलिटी बट हाइपोटेंशन कैन डेफिनेटली रिप्रेजेंट प्री टर्मिनल स्टेट ऑफ द चाइल्ड सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट शॉक वी हैव कैटेगराइजेशन एज नॉर्मल नॉर्मोटेंसिव शॉक एंड हाइपोटेंसिव शॉक सो द टिपिकल नॉर्मोटेंसिव शॉक विल हैव नॉर्मल ब्लड प्रेशर बट चाइल्ड मे बी स्टिल क्रिटिकल एंड मे प्रोग्रेस फर्दर बट वंस इट इज हाइपोटेंसिव और लो ब्लड प्रेशर डेफिनेटली ही इज क्रिटिकल अनलाइक एडल्ट्स द पीडियाट्रिक पेशेंट्स हैव एज स्पेसिफिक कट ऑफ्स टू लेबल अ पर्टिक्युलर नंबर एज नॉर्मल और एब नॉर्मल द डब्ल्यू एच ओ रिकमेंड्स डॉक्यूमेंटेशन ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर ऑफ एवरी चाइल्ड एट लीस्ट वंस अ इयर आफ्टर थ्री इयर्स ऑफ एज एंड दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड बिलीव मी इन अ डे टू डे ओ पी डी विथ और विदाउट वेन दे कम फॉर रूटीन चेकअप और वैक्सीनेशन एट फाइव इयर्स वी मेक इट अ पॉइंट टू चेक इट एंड मे नॉट बी मे बी वन इन हंड्रेड और वन इन थाउजेंड वी मे गेटिंग दोज कैंड ऑफ एबनॉर्मेलिटीज वी मे गेट एन एडल्ट्स एंड स्पेशली दो चिल्ड्रेन आई पिकड अप दे आर गोइंग टू यू एस दे कम फॉर वैक्सीनेशन सर्टिफिकेट और समथिंग वी चेक द ब्लड प्रेशर एंड विद अ प्रेजेंट स्टेट ऑफ ओबेसिटी एंड ऑल वी रियली पिक अप अ गुड नंबर ऑफ चिल्ड्रेन हु आर लाइंग ऑन द अबव रेड लाइन ऑफ अ ब्लड प्रेशर विच कैन बी कैटेगराइज एज अ हाइपर टेंशन there are multiple methods of measurement of blood pressure the common one that we follow in office practice is manual by spigmo or manometer but certain precautions need to be taken specially when you are measuring a blood pressure in the pediatric patient should be around a single bone part of the lung that is upper arm or thigh sometimes in a bg icu i have seen those cup being put in the calf area which is actually not the right way appropriate size of the cup is very important in pediatric the bladder length of the cuff should be at least covering 80% of the circumference of the uh, circumference of the limb and a width at least 2/3 the length of the arm now if you having a longer width then you are likely to kind of uh, recording relatively lower systolic blood pressure and if you are having narrower width then you may be fallaciously recording higher systolic blood pressure that should be noted the non invasive blood pressure is other way by which we document blood pressure which in which mean arterial pressure is reliable systolic diastolic may not be so and these machines are not validated for shock state so if there is any hemodynamic instability perhaps nibp is not the right way to monitor this patient and of course the third one which we commonly use in icu is invasive blood pressure where we put the catheter inside a distal artery commonly radial or dorsalis or posterior tibial and then we continuously monitor the blood pressure the systolic diastolic and the mean arterial pressure which is kind of a continuous updating of the blood pressure there are certain common terminologies or would say norms which we need to understand the systolic blood pressure represents the contractility of the left ventricle the diastolic pressure represents the systemic vascular tone or resistance the pulse pressure which is systolic minus diastolic represent the cardiac stroke volume which normally should be between 25 to 50% of the systolic pressure note it again 25 to 50% of the systolic pressure this is important because when we are nowadays discussing shock we are talking about narrow pulse pressure and wide pulse pressure shock so when i say narrow pulse pressure the pulse pressure is less than 25% of systolic and when i say wide pulse pressure the pulse pressure is more than 50% of the systolic and the last component is mean arterial pressure which is actually considered as true tissue perfusion pressure which is measured by the ipp or it can be surrogate calculated by the diastolic plus 1/3 the pulse pressure which may not be really accurate in a pediatric patient 
the normal blood pressure is age where there are certain age variable norms and third percentiles are available there are percentile charts which you need to follow for that there are abnormalities of blood pressure or it could be hypotension that is low blood pressure hypertension which could be high blood pressure and third is asymmetric blood pressure in different limbs i'll come to that in a next few minutes the normal cutoffs for hypotension for systolic blood pressure up to one month baby it is 60 millimeters so anything below 60 millimeters systolic is hypotension one month to one year is 70 millimeters from one year to 10 years is 70 plus age in years into two so say five years old child it will be 70 plus five into two that is 80 so anything below 80 millimeters is hypotension and more than 10 years it is 90 millimeters for more accuracy we nowadays follow mean arterial pressure so up to one year it is 45 millimeters one to ten years 45 plus age in years into 1.5 and for more than 10 years and on a little adults more than 65 millimeters mean arterial pressure is normal how do we interpret this shock status in a shock assessment blood pressure is the last parameter of total seven so as we clinically monitor shock first thing we take into consideration is a pulse rate then central peripheral pulse correlation whether it is weak or normal then we take up the tissue perfusion so we take initially skin perfusion by capillary fill time core to temperature difference which should be more than three degrees centigrade then we take hourly urine output which should be more than one ml per kg per hour and then we take the cns perfusion by av avpu score or glasgow coma scale so all the six parameters and last to be monitored is blood pressure if all other six parameters are bang normal and blood pressure is just about below the percentile third, third percentile that is a cutoff which i told you then we may monitor this patient and may not rush into a shock management so that is how blood pressure is to be taken as a last parameter for consideration shock can be categorized as normotensive or compensatory shock compensated shock wherein rest of first six parameters few of them may be abnormal but the blood pressure is maintained and hypotensive shock means the initial parameters are abnormal and the blood pressure is also dropped blood pressure is one of the upstream markers of hemodynamic assessment so it is a marker which we check before the blood reaches the tissue so it is again not a very reliable parameter for monitoring a given or kind of assessment of a given shock patient the type of shock and uh, according to so previously we used to talk as cold shock and warm shock now those terminologies are almost left over and we rather monitor them as narrow pulse pressure shock and wide pulse pressure shock so the wide pulse pressure shock is more of a vasoplegic or vasodilatory shock or in the old terminology used to be called as mal distributive or warm shock typical example could be septic shock neurogenic shock or anaphylactic shock and a narrow pulse pressure shock which previously we used to call as cold shock which is classically seen in hypovolemic shock cardiogenic shock obstructive shock and even a few of the septic shock the cutoffs for hypertension let's move to this next part that is hypertension the cutoff is clinically there are definitely third percentile charts for that or kind of 90 percentile charts for monitoring that but on the bedside we would take it as 100 plus age in years into two that's the upper cutoff say for a five year old child it will be 100 plus five into two that is 110 anything above 110 one should be evaluating this child for a hypertension and then there are hypertension which is grade one then hypertensive urgency hypertensive emergency you know so those kind of terminology i'll not go into details of that once you label as hypertension go into cvrd and determine the emergence of treatment emergency needed there are multiple causes so there are certain dictums in medicine if there is hypertension it is very likely or unless proved otherwise renal in origin could be glomerular or renovascular but there are relatively lesser common causes like endocrinal causes coarctation of aorta essential hypertension sometimes compensatory hypertension raise intracranial pressure will come up with the hypertension obviously you will be looking for signs of raise icp otherwise and then not to forget idiopathic hypertension or nowadays the uh, essential hypertension we call it which commonly we see in adolescents which are always with the present malnutrition culture evaluation of hypertension a good thorough clinical history followed by examination which will be all pulses to rule out in the differentiation of the pulses all limb blood pressure is very essential when we come across this 
he said you need to look for evidence of renal disease like edema, pallor, undernutrition, evidence of endocrine disorders, syndromic assessments, all those things need to be done and then followed by appropriate lab and radiological evaluation is to be done. Differential blood pressure is the third category apart from hypo and hypertension wherein you will have different blood pressure in different limb. This typically will be seen in case of coarctation of aorta where lower limb blood pressure will be more than 20 milliliters lesser as compared to upper limb. This will be there and in a rare case of a major artery blocks like Takayoshi syndrome or tuberculous aorta arteritis, you may see right upper limb being lesser blood pressure as compared to left upper limb or vice versa because of obstruction of the aorta artery. What is very essential is every patient getting admitted always record blood pressure at least once. If there is any doubt record all four blood pressure or limb four pressure especially child come with hypertension, child come with weaker pulse on one side always make it a point to record blood pressure in all four limbs and go ahead. Thank you very much. Point to be taken every child about three years should check blood pressure every year. Every admitted patient record the blood pressure. Shock patient monitor your blood pressure following the initial six parameters of shock. If you document blood pressure abnormality record the blood pressure in all four limbs and always keep that a rare possibility of differential blood pressure in different limb. Thank you very much. So next talk is going to be on interpretation of neck veins by Dr. Tushar Maniar. Thank you very much.